Welcome back, Morningside Read Aloud friends. We are going to learn about snow. And whether you love it, could live without it, it is super cool and I can't wait to dive into this book with you. The Story of Snow, The Science of Winter's Wonder by Mark Casino with John Nelson. The beautiful snowflakes. Our story starts on a winter day, high up in the sky, in a cloud that is very, very cold. This is the story of snow. Clouds are mostly made of air, which we can't see. Then there is water vapor, water in the form of a gas, which we also can't see. We do see the billions of tiny droplets of liquid water and ice crystals that float in the cloud. They reflect light, making the cloud visible. Snow begins with a speck. Clouds are mostly made of air and water, but there are also bits of other things, like tiny particles of dirt, ash, and salt. Even living bacteria can float in the wind and end up in a cloud. A snow crystal needs one of these specks to start growing. These specks are all much smaller than the eye can see. But if you could see them, here's a great graphic example, ash or soot from a volcano or fire, grain of pollen from a flower, salt left over from the ocean water that evaporates, particle of soil, bacteria from plant leaves. The speck becomes the center of a snow crystal. When a speck gets cold enough, water vapor will stick to it. If you had a microscope that could see such small things, here is what you would see. Water vapor sticks to the cold speck, making the speck wet. More water vapor sticks to the wet speck, forming a water droplet. The droplet freezes into a ball of ice. More water vapor sticks to the ball of ice and it grows into a hexagon shaped ice crystal. Water vapor continues to stick to the crystal. Faster growth on the corners causes six branches to sprout. The branches keep growing, sprouting little arms of their own, and a beautiful snow crystal is born. Ooh, that page is full of amazing figurative language, friends. Can't wait to talk about that. These photographs of real snow crystals are shown much larger than their actual size. The crystals were collected during many different snowfalls. Here is the actual size. A snow crystal forms as it falls. As the snow crystal gets bigger and heavier, it starts to fall to earth. It keeps growing as it falls through its cloud, taking on its own special shape. The shape depends on how wet the cloud is and how cold it is. A snow crystal can start to grow one way, but then grow another way when it passes through a wetter or colder part of its cloud. The crystal stops growing soon after falling below the clouds. This illustration showing you parts of a snow crystal can break during the fall to earth, causing the arms to look different. Each are unique. Snow crystals can be stars. One common snow crystal shape is the star. 
Star-shaped snow crystals usually have six arms reaching out from a center point. The center point is the home of the speck that started the crystal. The six arms look alike, but they are almost never exactly alike. Star-shaped snow crystals are called dendrites, which means tree-like. They form when a cloud is full of moisture and when the temperature hovers around five degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, this is a beautiful photograph. This is the simplest kind of plate crystal, a hexagon. Plates form when there's not enough moisture in the cloud for stars to form. And when the temperature conditions are a few degrees warmer or colder than the temperature range that stars require. Snow crystals can be plates. Plate crystals are thin like star crystals, but they don't have arms. The simplest kind of plate is a hexagon with six straight sides. More complicated plates have points where arms almost grew. Here is an example of a simple plate crystals are much smaller than stars. They can be as wide as one millimeter, but they're usually a lot smaller. So here's the actual size and here's the photograph. The points on this plate crystal are the beginnings of arms that were just starting to develop when the crystal fell out of its cloud and stopped growing. Snow crystals can also be columns. Column-shaped snow crystals are shaped like pencils. They're not flat like stars and plates. Columns can form high in the clouds and at very cold temperatures. They are very tiny and when they fall, they make for very slippery snow. So a column has six sides and these are the three types. We have a solid column, a hollow column, and a capped on the ends column. Here's a great photograph here. Capped columns like this one develop when a column crystal moves into a part of its cloud where the temperature is right for plates or stars to grow at the ends. The two end caps can grow to different sizes as you can see here. Six is the magic number for snow crystals. This is because of the nature of water. Water molecules, the smallest units of water, attach themselves into groups of six, which usually leads to crystals with six arms or six sides. A perfect star or plate snow crystal has six fold symmetry. That means if you divided the crystal into six pie wedges, each pie wedge would have the same shape. Snow crystals are rarely perfect. So much can happen during a snow crystal's fall to earth. It is rare that one will turn out perfectly. If a droplet of water passes close to one arm of a snow crystal, that arm can start to grow faster. Before long, that one arm will be a lot longer than the others. A snow crystal can be a twin. A snow crystal can have 12 arms. This is a twin crystal, which happens when two crystals start from the original speck and form on top of each other. A snow crystal can have bumps. If there are enough water droplets near the crystal, some can strike the crystal and freeze on contact. This gives the crystal little bumps called rind. Many snow crystals make one snowflake. 
Often, snow crystals bump into each other and get stuck together. When this happens, snowflakes form. Hundreds or even thousands of snow crystals can be found in a single snowflake. Two snow crystals stuck together. Snowflakes we see falling from the sky are usually clumps of snow crystals like these. Individual crystals, which are sometimes also called snowflakes, can fall on their own, but they are much smaller and harder to see. Once a snow crystal lands, it starts to wither away. Snow crystals can't keep growing after they fall from the clouds. And when a crystal stops growing, it immediately starts to wither. Soon, the arms of the crystal break down and the crystal shape becomes rounded. This means that if you want to see a snow crystal, you need to catch it in the air or find it very soon after it lands. And down here we have someone, she's trying to catch the snowflake because she knows when they're not in the clouds, surrounded by the water vapor, they need to grow. Snow crystals quickly start to erode. Try catching one on your sleeve or glove to see the crystal structure at its best. Here's an awesome photograph here on this page. Are no two snow crystals alike? Some simple plate crystals may appear exactly alike, as seen through a high quality microscope. When it comes to more complicated snow crystals though, odds are that no two are exactly alike, but then no two leaves, flowers, or people are exactly alike either. Snow crystals are like us. We're each different, but we have a lot in common. And at the back of the book, it just tells you, it's a little guide, how to catch your own snow crystals. A snow crystal is a letter from the sky. I love snow. I don't know about you, but I'm sure we'll have time to talk about it together as a class. But I am always hoping for a good snow. What about you?